Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on biostatistics and design of experiments. Uh, now we are going to talk about uh, something called control charts. Um, these control charts are very useful especially in manufacturing, especially if you are running bioprocess, uh, when you are uh, manufacturing biomaterials uh, continuously day in and day out, you want to know whether uh, uh, you are uh, uh, able to achieve everyday uh, products within that specification is there is a slow drift from within limits going out of limits and uh, when should I get uh, worried. So, control charts uh, in very very important in industrial scenario be it bioprocess, be it chemical process, be it manufacturing of goods, manufacturing of biomaterials, um, even manufacturing of bolts and nuts and so on actually. So, it tells you, um, it warns you a priori. Uh, whether you are going to go out of control because ultimately I want to make every day uh, the same product with the same specifications, I do not want to go out of my specifications because that is not good number one and number two uh, customer if he gets that sort of uh, product um, which are outside the specification, uh, he will consider it as a defective product. So, obviously, he is going to return it back to you. Uh, which means you may have to rework it uh, and that means it is cost or if you just dump it that is a waste. So, you are going to lose a lot of money. So, control charts have become very important in the past uh, 20 years and uh, uh, Japanese who always believed in the qual concept of quality um, believed that whatever products that are leaving their company uh, should be within that control limits within the specification limit so that the customer um, does not get uh, worried, customer gets satisfied, customer does not re return products which are uh, not under specific in specification uh, which means you are losing money, you are losing your profit. Uh, so, this statistical process control, this is a probability based decision rules, you are looking at the process that means any repetitive task, you are manufacturing um, a metabolite day in and day out you are manufacturing antibiotic every day for years and years, you are ma manufacturing a diaphragm valve uh, every day, you are manufacturing thousands of bolts every day for years together that is a repetitive task. So, you want to manufacture within the limits of your control limits, specification limits you understand. So, if I am saying that uh, my diaphragm valves I manufacture will last for 400,000 uh, cycles that means, it should last for 400,000 cycles ok. Control which is monitoring the process performance that means, you want to monitor and keep it see whether it is uh, going to get bad. So, the statistical process control or SPC it wants out of control situation ok. So, if you are going to go out of control it tells you a hey, better watch out. So, it gives you a graphical comparison of observation again statistical computed control limit. So, over a period of time it can tell you how the uh, average size of the um, screws change ok over a period of time within plus or minus 1 sigma or within plus or minus 2 sigma or within plus or minus 3 sigma. Is it slowly going up, up and up or is there a randomly it is varying or sometimes it goes out of uh, 1 sigma, 2 sigma, 3 sigma uh, or all the time it is within that region. So, it tells you a graphical uh, picture and it is very useful in the manufacturing scenario ok. Uh, control charts Walter Andrew Schuert of the Bell Laboratories originally developed these charts in the 1920s ok. It is also called run charts, it gives you a upper and lower control limits like I said we can have a plus or minus 1 sigma then plus or minus 2 sigma plus or minus 3 sigma and every day you plot uh, the average uh, flexural strength um, of a material ok. So, you keep on plotting it and see whether it is all the time lying within that plus or minus 1 sigma or does it go sometimes 3 sigma or so does it go beyond that and so on. For variable data control charts are analyzed in pairs. 
So, one chart for measuring the variability between groups and another for measuring variability within a group that is variation or dispersion chart. So, uh, variability between is average other one you call it dispersion that is variable data control chart. So, you take two, two data points, so you take the average, so every day is average you plot every day, day to day, tomorrow, day after and so on. At the same time you have another graph which gives you the difference or the range or the variability and keep on plotting that. So, today um, suppose I got a bolt of uh, 10 and uh, 10.5 diameter, so the average will be 10.25 and the variability will be 0 0.5. So, I will have two graphs. If tomorrow I am getting uh, a 10 and 10.3, the average will be a 10.15 and the variability will be 0 0.3, like that I keep plotting. For attribute data, attribute data is S no and that sort of thing, control charge tracks the number of defects. Okay. So, um, if uh, I take 10,000 volts every day and see how many defects are there, today I got 20, tomorrow I got 19, day after tomorrow I got 18, so I plot a graph okay, as x axis will be time, y axis will be number of defects, attributes, okay, how many defects. So, these are various types of control charts which we can plot. Okay, so, this is a typical control chart. Okay. So, I am measuring uh, some data here, this is an average chart. right? So, as a function of time here, it this could be uh, today, this could be tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, this or it could be uh, today, uh, this is 12 hours from now, this 24 hours from now, then 36 hours, 48 hours. So, the x axis will be like that. Um, this gives you an average of uh, yeah, may either the diameter of a part or it will be flexural strength or uh, uh, product percentage or it could be biomass produced. Uh, so, as a function of time or antibiotic concentration or tighter value and this is the lower control limit, this could be upper control limit. You can say I will have this LCL lower control limit, upper control limit as 3 plus or minus 3 sigma. Okay, so, you, as you keep monitoring over a period of time as you keep doing that you can see some what is happening to the results. Am I having some big variations, am I having small variation, is these variations only random okay? or is there a pattern that is happening? That sort of understanding I can do by looking at it. So, this is the average, uh, we can look at uh, average, we can also this could be the variation. So, uh, like I said if the uh, two bowls I take one is 10 and another is 10.1, the variation could be 0 0.1. In the next uh, sample uh, one could be 10, another could be 10.3, uh, variation could be 0 0.3. Uh, so, like that I could, I could plot and I could look at how they change. Okay, as a function of time. So, we can look at the drift, okay, how the data is drifting, is it slowly going down or it is slowly going up okay, or is it random. So, we can see so many things by looking at it pictorially over, over a period of time. Like I said it could be every day, it could be every 12 hours, it could be every week, okay, uh, it could be every 6 hours depending upon how I am doing my uh, sample collection and how important is the x axis. Okay. So, when a subgroup average falls outside of the control limits, so if there is a data point coming here, oh, then I should get worried actually. Uh, it means a difference exists between the mean of that sample and the historical average. It gives you an evidence of whether a process has been operating in a state of statistical control. So, if it is all lying within this nicely, obviously we can say it is within statistical control is very, very important uh, as I said in many, many situations where there is a manufacturing happening, chemical manufacturing, biochemical manufacturing, antibiotic manufacturing, uh, you are in biomaterial manufacturing. So, uh, these type of control charts are extremely important. Is there any special cause of variation so that corrective action can be taken and sudden suppose uh, data is going like this and suddenly the data all shoots up and it is going all like this. So, obviously, something has happened. So, immediately I can check my plant, I can check my manufacturing and find out what is the reason for that. Maybe my raw material has changed, raw material quality has changed. Maybe some valves have stopped, uh, well some measuring instruments have stopped performing properly, it is a malfunctioning of instruments and so on actually. Okay. Um, so, it is an excellent upstream process control tool 
Control charts are ideally suited for monitoring and controlling excess. These are all excess, they are used to minimize defect, uh, monitor the process variation and generate a signal when the process variation is influenced by special cause. So, like I said, suddenly um, the, res the results are changed dramatically and it goes to a new set of values, obviously there is some special cause variation. It is not a random cause variation. I introduced the term this special and random cause long time back. So, there are many types of charts, we look at it average chart. So, I take 10 samples, I take an average and then I plot the average um, against UCL and LCL. UCL is upper control limit, LCL is lower control limit, sigma by square root of n, right? You remember this? Standard error. Uh, or it could be a variation chart, variation chart is nothing but, okay? You take a square root of x i minus x bar square, uh, n i minus 1, n is the number of uh, observations, okay. And then we could take a summation of s i, there will be k, where k is the number of the subgroups, okay. Then we can calculate l. So, we can have average chart, we can have variation chart, okay. Uh, so, it is a graphical representation. Um, so, it is uh, like H naught is mu i equal to mu, H a is mu a is not equal to mu. So, for 3 sigma, what do you do? 3 sigma you take alpha by 2 is 0 0.00135, that is to get 99.7 percent, right? So, um, we plot a 3 sigma or we can have 2 sigma or we can have 1 sigma um, in the upper and lower bounds actually. So, this is the lower control limit that could be minus 3 sigma, the upper control limit could be plus 3 sigma, okay. Then you will also have upper specification limit, lower specification limit. What is this control limits? Control limits is what you try to control in your manufacturing facility. Specification limit is what you tell your uh, customer, okay. Uh, you may tell uh, the, the diameter of a bolt uh, uh, is uh, 12 mm plus or minus 0.1 mm, okay. So, the specification limits minus 0.1 mm plus 0.1 mm that is the specification. But uh, when you are manufacturing inside you may have a better control, you may, you may have a control uh, which could be uh, plus or minus 0 0.05 mm, okay. So, your lower control limit will be mi uh, minus 0 0.05, upper control limit could be plus 0 0.05. You see uh, UCL and LCL is always uh, inside the USL and LSL. This is what you tell your customer and this is what uh, you control in your manufacturing facility, okay. Specification control limits are for averages, specifications are for individual values. So, if a customer, if you are selling bolts to the customer, he picks up one bolt and measures its diameter, uh, it should fall within the USL and LSL, okay. Whereas, you use this for controlling the averages, okay. Now, um, you are having a control chart, you are looking at the control chart and then when do you say the process is going well, it is within control or when do you say the process is not going well, uh, it is going out of control, okay. There are some symptoms, okay, like uh, uh, there are some symptoms when you get uh, some fever, right, uh, your body temperature goes up or you have a dry cough, okay. So, you look at those symptoms and then you say probably you have um, some sort of a viral fever going on. Uh, so, those are the symptoms. So, you look at the data points and uh, from those data points you say yes, my process is going to go out of control. Before it goes out of control, you try to tell that the process is going to go out of control. So, one or more points are outside the control limits of course. Suppose you have points like this, then obviously it is gone no hope. Seven or more consecutive points are, are one side of the center line. This is your center line if seven points are one side, no, like this. Seven consecutive increasing or decreasing intervals up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Two or three consecutive points fall in uh, zone A. Zone A is this. Suppose you have this as three plus or minus three sigma, you can have this as plus or minus two sigma. This is as plus or minus uh, 1 sigma. So, this is called zone A, 3 to 2 is zone A, 2 to 1 is B, um, 1 to 0 that is mean as 
C. So, 2 or 3 consecutive points fall in zone A, 4 or 5 consecutive points fall in zone B, 3, 4 consecutive points alternate up and okay. There are 14 consecutive points that alternate up and down, there are 14 consecutive points in zone C, understand. So, obviously what it means is if there are too many consecutive points in one zone, that means the data is not moving random. A random cause um, will always have data points going up and down, okay. So, um, only if there is an assignable cause, there will be a pattern. So, these are the patterns. You may ask why 7, why not 6, why not 8, yes. But these are just taking it as a rule of thumb, so you did not have to question that. So, 2 or 3 consecutive points in zone A, 2, uh, 4 or 5 consecutive points in zone B, 14 consecutive points in zone C or 14 consecutive points that go up and down, up and down, up and down like that, okay. okay. So, zone C is nearest, zone A is nearest the UCL or the LCL. Okay. Let us look at some situations. Okay. So, obviously, one point more than 3 sigma, obviously, that is a special cause variation. Uh, 7 points in a row on same side of the center line. Okay. So, this is the rule 2. Obviously, there could be some problem here. Uh, 7 points in a row all increasing or 7 points in a row all decreasing like I mentioned here, increasing or decreasing. Obviously, there could be some special cause. Uh, 14 points it is going like this, ding tong like this you know up and down, up and down, up and down with respect to the mean. So, obviously, there is a problem. Um, you do not have to question why 14, why not 16, yes it could be, but uh, as I said it is just taken based on experience. Okay. Uh, 2 out of 3 points more than 2 sigma, okay. 4 out of 5 points more than 1 sigma from the center line, 14 points in a row within 1 sigma from the center line. Okay. So, all these mean if you have such a situation obviously, there is something going happening with your system, there is a special cause variation, you better check out your process so that you uh, do not have the entire process exploding in front of you. Okay. So, this is a very important point you need to keep in mind. Okay. So, what are the different types of charts you know? Of course, uh, you remember the alpha and beta error, two types of errors possible in control charts, calling a special cause variation a common cause that is random, calling a common cause that is a random variation as a special cause variation. So, both are possible actually. Okay. So, you have variable chart, you have the attribute chart, variable chart is continuous uh, measured cycle time, lens, diameter, or particle or droplets, it is a one characteristic per chart. Okay. So, we can have low individual axis moving average range x bar chart that means average or you can give range chart. Uh, what is range chart? So, you collect 2, 3 samples and um, you look at the lowest and the highest subtract that is a range part. X bar is the average of the sample set moving range that means every time uh, you calculate the range um, based on the new set of data we have collected individual values also there. Now, if you go to attribute chart there is something called defect chart number of non conformance in a part okay, that is called a defect chart uh, defective that is pass or fail good or bad go no go sort of situation. So, we can have different types of charts, there are something called C chart, U chart, P chart, NP chart. So, uh, if you have a constant uh, lot or unit size, that means every time I take 3 samples and do calculations how many C, how many defects are there, then you use a C chart. But if you have a variable lot uh, and then calculate the defect, then you have U chart. Uh, again, you have constant set of uh, sample taken and find out the defective, that is called the NP chart. If you have a variable set and then look at the defective and uh, that is called a p chart. So, here you use a binomial, you use a poison, here you use a defect, defective. So, these are some of the charts that are also possible for you to work on. So, x bar chart and r chart, x bar is the average, r chart is the range. So, as the name implies, it is very straightforward. 
So you have the x bar and this is the range. So you plot them with plus or minus 3 sigma, uh, points move up and down around the center line and stay inside the control, predictable process only this is called a random variable, does not indicate uh, best process but still it is a stable process. Then you have the individual chart. That means you plot the individual values over time. Suppose I am uh, measuring uh, the pH as a function of time, I put the pH as a function of time and do that. Moving range chart, so what you do? Uh, we use xi minus xi minus 1 bar over time. So when I take another 2 samples, then the xi will change, xi minus 1 bar will change. Uh, so that will have another range, so that is called a moving range chart. This is similar to x bar and r charts, okay, okay, except that it is single value, not subgroups. That is called the i and mr, i is the individual, mr is the moving range. Now we have the c chart, uh, this is charts for defect per unit, okay, like I said the c chart here if you look at this figure, I have constant lot size, I take say 10 samples and then um, I calculate the defect chart defects per unit, okay. this is how it goes. So every set of samples I take, okay, constant subgroup, lot size and then calculate how many uh, defects per unit, okay. that is called the C chart. Then you have the U chart, when you have the variable lot that is called the U, it is the same as C chart except this, this size, lot size keeps changing. So sometimes a process may go like this, you know, suddenly the variable, sometimes the process will get the problem as occasional values that are clearly not a part of the basic process. So mistake in measuring or bottom piece on top piece tag, end of bar, so many different reasons, one point may be going up. So the U chart is almost like C chart, only thing is you do not, the number of uh, um, samples you take in each lot may vary, whereas in C chart every time you take the same set, same set of samples in a subgroup. Then you have the P chart measures fraction defective, okay? whereas the other one is C chart is actual number of defects, whereas P chart is fraction defective, okay? it is a proportion. Okay? Control limits are based on the binomial distribution, sample size does not have to be equal here in the P chart also because you are calculating fraction defective. Occasionally some data may go up and down, okay? here also you can plot the 3 sigma but this keeps will keep varying, uh, okay. Then you have the NP chart, uh, NP chart is nothing but if you remember, um, NP chart is constant lot size, uh, you are looking at the defective here, okay. Number non-conforming in subgroup, same as the P chart except here lot size is constant, okay? fraction, NP chart, so when you do NP chart, probability uh, into N, so obviously it becomes a number of uh, defective items, do you understand? So P chart is the fraction, whereas when you multiply the N, number of uh, um, samples in the subgroup then it becomes a number and that gives you a sample count which are defective. So uh, you are plotting this and you are seeing how many defectives over a period of time, okay. So is, is it going too much or uh, it is within this range, that is what you are studying in the NP chart. So you have so many different types of charts which I talked about and uh, there are different types of uh, formulae to calculate and there are many softwares which can do that also. But uh, this particular uh, um, set of statistical process control giving a pictorial representation of uh, what is happening to the process is extremely useful because uh, before a real uh, problem hits you, you can from the data uh, identify whether a problem is looming behind the scene, um, whether you need to take any corrective action. So the upper control limit and the lower control limit are the two extremes within which you would like to have your process. Not only that, but if there is some sort of a pattern that is happening, then you need to better watch out. 
That means if you have too many points uh, near about 2 sigma or if you have too many points above uh, 1 sigma, you better watch out or corresponding minus 2 and minus 1 sigma. And also if you have uh, 14 points consecutively going up and down, if you are having 7 points consecutively going up or 7 points con consecutively going down, then obviously you need to be very careful and you need to kind of assume that there is some problem that is uh, looming around. So, there are many uh, softwares as I said which can plot uh, uh, these various types of charts, um, as I said the average chart, the range chart, okay. then you have the uh, defective chart, defects chart with varying uh, lot size, uh, constant lot size and so on. And um, uh, as I said uh, this is very useful in a manufacturing scenario um, like uh, bioprocess or uh, chemical process or if you are manufacturing um, biomaterials, bowls, nuts, um, anything where uh, you are trying to produce the same item uh, with a set of uh, uh, with the range of product quality uh, that is uh, the specification limits for the customer and control limits for the manufacturing, you would like to always uh, keep uh, this range uh, with keep the product uh, qualities within this range. Okay? So, uh, that completes uh, the course on uh, biostatistics and design of experiments. Um, we have been uh, looking at a lot of things in the past 40 lectures. Uh, statistics was always a, um, a boring subject, but once uh, the manufacturing industries, especially the chemical and the engineering manufacturing industries, car manufacturing industries came into being. Um, around second world war um, product quality became very very important and uh, customer satisfaction became very important. So, uh, one needs to look at uh, uh, the consistency of the product. So, statistics became very important in the manufacturing industries. Then Japanese came uh, into the world scenario uh, who introduced the concept of quality. Uh, so, products that were coming out from Japanese industries um, were very particular about uh, highest quality. So, they adopted lot of these statistical techniques, design of experiment techniques, the analysis techniques, ANOVAs, T-tests and so on for comparing different processes for um, mentioning whether a product quality is within limits, outside limits. So, uh, the Japanese made the statistics. Um, and statistical analysis is very, very important. Okay. Uh, then other companies started following, American companies realized that Japanese were overtaking uh, them because Japanese were very particular about uh, quality. Uh, so, the American companies like uh, General Electric and, may, uh, and many other companies also adopted the concept of uh, uh, quality and uh, statistical analysis. Um, biology is a subject. Uh, which also handles lot of data, uh, lot of uh, variations. So, biostatistics became very important because many of the statistical principles could be adopted into biostatistics uh, for comparing uh, um, different uh, processes, bioprocess and performance. Then once the clinical trials came into existence over the past 25, 30 years, um, the modern clinical trial approach started coming in. Uh, then statistical tools became very important for comparing results from different locations, different sites, uh, different types of drugs and so on. And um, without uh, following these statistical analytical procedures and principles, one cannot conclude whether the drug is superior than the uh, older drug or whether the drug is as good as the older drug. So, we looked at lot of uh, statistical techniques, um, tests, different types of tests we looked at. We also looked at different types of distributions, log normal distribution, beta distribution, poison, binomial um, and so on. All this distribution had uh, uh, has some bearing in the area of uh, biology that is why this course is called biostatistics and uh, we did quite a lot of problems uh, over the period of uh, 40 lectures and as you can see um, we had to use quite a lot of these uh, tables 
tables for uh, z, tables for t, tables for f, uh, tables for chi square, tables for non parametric like rank test, sign rank test and so on actually. Okay. Um, some of these could be done using excel, uh, some of these could be done using a freely available software and of course, if you buy a commercial software um, obviously many of them could be done. Um, whereas, uh, I did not show you any examples using commercial software um, because uh, one may have there are so many hundreds of commercial softwares each one having their own advantages and disadvantages and I do not want to dwell on them. Uh, we tried to solve these problems using fundamental approach uh, so that uh, um, you will understand what is the underlying uh, mathematics behind it, what is underlying uh, philosophy behind it. So, even if you use a software on a later date and you find that uh, you get a lot of results, uh, at least you will be able to understand what these results meant to be. Okay? Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this course, uh, I hope you benefited from the course and every uh, after en end of every week that is after end of every 5 videos, I also try to in have a small quiz uh, with, with problems solving so that that will brush up uh, the um, theory uh, which I taught in the previous 5 lectures and of course, uh, some of these calculations could be quite intensive, but of course, if you use uh, excel uh, it is not very difficult even using a calculator it is not very difficult, um, but then uh, it gives you a fundamental understanding of uh, the whole concept of uh, biostatistics. Then we also looked at design of experiments, large number of designs. Um, the full factorial design, fractional factorials, second order design. So, all the designs are very useful for you to uh, sort of uh, um, plan how to go about varying different parameters. So, that uh, you have minimum number of experiments, but at the same time get maximum information out of the entire uh, process. Okay? So, the idea is minimum experiments, maximum um, knowledge out of it rather than maximum experiment uh, not in so much in enough knowledge about it. And each of these designs were well planned out, they are very symmetric um, as I explained in many situations they are extremely balanced and that is very, very important and statistics bias is one which you need to avoid uh, because that will mask the results as well as your experimental um, findings. Okay? So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, 40 lectures and I hope you benefited from this and um, oh, uh, you will be making use of it quite a lot, especially this is very useful for biologists, uh, bioprocess engineers, clinicians, uh, clinical trial scientists um, and some of these concepts of course, can be used by other engineers and technologists as well. Okay? Good luck, thank you very much for your time.